We're back at Walt Disney World. I spent so much time at Disneyland, I've managed to find and share on video some very weird things there. And now it's time to give Walt Disney World the same treatment. So without further ado, here's five weird things at Walt Disney World. Disney's Animal Kingdom, the fourth theme park added to Walt Disney World. It's part zoo, part wild animal safari, and of course, part theme park. But with all this fantastic, crazy, and unusual stuff in Animal Kingdom, the weirdest isn't in one of these cages with the animals. It's lurking in the foliage and trails that all the guests travel on. At any given point along the jungly paths of Animal Kingdom, you might be disturbed by a sudden rustling in the leaves and trees, and the weirdest thing of all might appear. It's part plant, part animal, part planimal but also a woman, so maybe a plumin. It's divine. She doesn't speak. She doesn't make eye contact. As a matter of fact, oddly enough, she's not even a Disney character. She's actually contracted from a totally different company. I get the metaphor. It kind of encapsulates what Animal Kingdom is all about. The oneness, the livingness of nature. I don't care who you are. That thing is weird. On to the next weird thing before something else pops out of the bushes. Aha, uh -huh, now we're at Disney's Hollywood Studios, the third theme park to open up at Walt Disney World. On May 1st, 1989, as Disney's MGM Studios, this place opened up and became the home of Muppet Vision, Star Tours, the Hollywood Tower of Terror. With everything from the original opening day attractions like the Great Movie Ride or the Old Backlot Tour, all the way down to the future Star Wars land opening up here at Disney's Hollywood Studios. It's always been all about the movies, the golden age even of Hollywood. So as you can imagine, there are quite a few weird things here. One of them that I think is a little unusual can be found between the exit to the Indiana Jones epic stunt show spectacular and the entrance to Star Tours. It's in here, the Backlot Express restaurant. The Backlot Express is themed around being on a real Hollywood backlot, which means that part of the restaurant looks like a paint department, part of the restaurant looks like a prop department. And as a result, this restaurant contains some pretty sweet movie memorabilia, including this. When the truck from Who Framed Roger Rabbit is sitting on the outside of a restaurant, you gotta wonder what's on the inside. I bet it's something weird. Let's go check it out. Don't order up your food just yet. First come back here and take a look at this. It turns out that according to these signs and these old photographs, this is a very old and dear friend of ours. Benny the Cab from Roger Rabbit. Benny the Cab, I always wanted to meet you. Never thought I'd be touching your skeleton. Basically, it looks like they took a normal type of quad vehicle, moved the steering to the back, attached a school chair for the driver, and then put this raised platform up here for Bob Hoskins to be seen up over the front of Benny the Cab, and they animated Roger Rabbit next to him. It's really crazy and cool and sophisticated and interesting to learn about how they achieved the shots. You can see them on the bridges in LA. There's all these cool old photographs. It's super awesome and amazing that this plastic school chair thing is where the actual one and only Bob Hoskins, every valiant, actually sat. And you can sit there in the same spot and theoretically eat your lunch. I mean, this is cool. This is awesome. It's historical. It belongs in a museum. And you can sit in it eating your food. Oh no, looks like they chained up Benny so he can't get away. Who did this to you, Benny? Was it the weasels? Was it the weasels? Actually, probably took a lot of skill to operate old Benny the Cab here because the entire left side of your vision would be blocked out by Bob Hoskins' um, lump. But if you're gonna have a lump in your face, why not Eddie Valiance? This whole experience is awesome, but weird. And now, friends, continuing our search for weird things, we have come to Epcot, 
the second theme park to open here at Walt Disney World on October 1st, 1982. It contains Future World. It contains the World Showcase. There are a lot of weird things here. So many, in fact, I think we're gonna have to do a whole separate video just about weird things in Epcot. But despite all the pavilions, attractions, and countries here at Epcot, there's one thing that I thought stood out from among the rest. It's just being pretty weird. Inside of the Electric Umbrella Restaurant, right here by the Fountain of Nations, right here in the shadow of Spaceship Earth, is something that, I mean, to me, you don't see it every day. It's a little unusual, a little strange. Could it be a little weird? There's nothing super weird about the Electric Umbrella itself. It's a pretty cool restaurant. They have really good gluten-free chicken tenders here for me. Wow. But for the most part, just your standard place to eat, relax, and enjoy the air conditioning. So what's weird about it? This. This trash can. Now this restaurant has a lot of trash cans, and they're all kind of the same color. But this particular one, just inside the door, just under this menu, does something a little weird. Look! Oh, thank you! <laughs> Are there people in there? Now in Toontown at Disneyland, they have all kinds of things that do stuff like this. But here at the Electric Umbrella, it's totally random, and it's only this trash can. Super, super weird. Why? For what? I don't know, but it's awesome. True story, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I still do this. I always personify everything, like everything becomes anthropomorphic to me. I'm always looking for faces and every object and stuff like that. And sometimes I used to feel really guilty throwing stuff in the trash can at home because it looked like it had a little face. This makes me feel better. Listen to it. This is my lucky day. French <laughs> fry. Hey, it's mine! It's mine! Ouch! Hey, watch it, dude. Like your trash just knocked off my shades. Oh, except for that one. My bad. Super fun and highly entertaining without being too trashy, but definitely weird. Okay, so I know there's gonna be quite a few people who are gonna cry boo for picking the trash can out of all the weird things in Epcot. So I guess I can give you two weird things from Epcot, given that Epcot's really two theme parks, Future World and of course, the World Showcase. Now World Showcase is made up of a ton of countries. Mexico, Norway, China, Africa sort of, Germany, miniature Germany, Italy, America, Japan, Morocco, France, England, and last but not least, the most exotic country of them all, Canada! Look how clean Canada is. That's not weird, that's actually pretty normal. Now some people would say that it's weird enough that Canada has their own pavilion in the first place. I wouldn't say that. I love Canada. It's a great country. But other than the weirdness of there just being a Canadian pavilion, there is actually something up here that's pretty unusual. Inside the Northwest Mercantile, the Canada Store, are all kinds of products from all over the great nation of Canada. But there's one thing that they chose to represent Canada's food that's a little strange. It's these ketchup flavored chips. I thought I was gonna get lucky and these were gonna have gluten in them, but they're apparently certified gluten free, which means I've gotta eat them now. Oh. Oh, ketchup flavored chips. Oh no. They're kinda good. I like ketchup flavored chips. Weird. Now, Magic Kingdom is Walt Disney World's version of Disneyland. There are a lot of similar attractions and a lot of weird differences, like, for example, dance parties in the hub by the castle. But one thing that Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World has that we definitely don't have at Disneyland is a whole other area, a whole other land unto itself, Liberty Square. Now, if you couldn't guess by the title or the theming with the Hall of Presidents or the Liberty Tree here, and of course, the Liberty Bell, no, not the boat. The boat's called the Liberty Bell too, but this uh, actual replica of the Liberty Bell made from the same molds they made the original from. Liberty Square is themed around the colonial slash revolutionary war era America. Liberty Square is maybe the most historical and the most educational Disneyland that I've ever, ever seen. 
not just the big obvious stuff, but the little things like the numbers on the buildings and the crooked way the shutters hang. Every little thing means something here in Liberty Square. And no, I'm not paranoid. It's just that the Disney Imagineers and designers went totally crazy here, adding in all kinds of levels of historical detail into the theming. Now I saved this one for last on purpose, not just in this video, but in all of the weird things videos we've ever done, this one might be the weirdest. I'm talking about this. Wow, he pointed at the ground. Is it the ground? The ground? That's right, everybody. I'm talking about the ground. The ground? The ground? What's weird about the ground? There's themed ground in all of the lands and all the Disney parks, Justin. Oh, trust me, gang. I know, I'm aware. A lot of people don't notice it, but if you look down at any Disney park, usually either the color or the texture or sometimes both of the ground is themed to that specific land. So when you enter Main Street, the ground is usually red to symbolize like a red carpet. You're entering a show. The ground in Frontierland is usually brown. But the ground, the ground, the ground, the ground here in Liberty Square really takes the cake in terms of pure weirdness. Now most of the ground in Liberty Square is this reddish color, not only because it's patriotic, but it symbolizes the fact that in colonial America, the roads were unpaved. That makes perfect sense. Reddish brown ground, reddish brown dirt, packed hard roads. Got it, easy. What's so weird about it? What's really weird is this stripe in the middle, winding its way all the way down from near the Haunted Mansion, all the way through Liberty Square, and all the way down to Frontierland is this brown streak. Now just at first glance even, that's pretty weird. But if you're thinking to yourself, self, brown streak doesn't sound very good. You're on the right track. You see kids, just like in old Europe, in colonial America, there were no flushing toilets. There were no sink drains. There was no indoor plumbing and there was no garbage disposal or dump truck coming by to pick up your trash. So what did they do with all that leftover food and rotten garbage and all that stinky duty water? I'll tell you exactly what they did. They did something very smart, something very normal for the time. They chucked it out the window. That's right, everybody. The founding fathers of this country were a bunch of litterers. Litter bugs, litter bugs, all of you. Now, like I said, the roads were unpaved, so people walked on either side anyways, because sometimes the middle would get pretty muddy. But as a result of the muddiness and the chucking of all the garbage right into the streets, the center of the road became a stream of, I don't know how else to put this, filth. That's right, everybody. Right now, all of these guests to the Magic Kingdom at Disney World, where dreams come true, the happiest place on earth, are walking over a stripe representing gross trash and doo-doo water. Now, like George Washington, I cannot tell a lie. Everything I've told you about this brown streak is the truth, and that's what makes it so weird. Not just that there's a streak representing garbage and doo-doo water right in the middle of a land at a Disney theme park, but that it was put here on purpose to teach people, which is both weird and super awesome. I'm swimming in history. Anyway, although I think it's awesome and I give 10,000 billion props and respect points to whoever pushed this idea through to a reality, I gotta say, I don't care who you are, brown streak of water representing, you know, doo-doo. That's weird, stinky weird. Well, there you go, guys. Five weird things from Walt Disney World. There are a ton more weird things in each of the theme parks here on Walt Disney World property. To say nothing of the hotels, the resorts, the water parks, that alone is pretty weird. Anyways, we'll have to come back for some more adventures. Make sure to subscribe so that you see them. Check out all the links down below and our other videos. And I'll see you guys in Random Land. Bye-bye. Benny. Gone too soon. You know, it's a little embarrassing, but um, when I was a kid growing up on the West Coast, I actually thought all of Epcot was located inside this ball. I know, I know, that's weird, but it's true. Looks like we got a guy behind us who went full Disney. I went full Disney yesterday. Passed out right in my socks. I guess that's not, that's weird. China looks pretty crowded right now. Just like the real China. Don't look at me. I'm not that weird. But you are. Germany. 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 I didn't even know they were a band anymore. I might as well have been walking on the sun this whole time. Mm.
Whip it. Uh, Whip it. Good. Oh, dang it. We're getting bonuses.